welcome to this series of Infectious Diseases Talk. I am Ed Ong. I am a consultant physician in general internal medicine with an interest in infectious diseases. I'm going to continue with this series of talk and actually explaining to you what surveillance is all about. Okay, I think it's a topic of, of interest and you may or not be aware of it that there are a lot of surveillance work done in the background, particularly in this current climate of the pandemic of COVID-19. So surveillance allows us to detect cases and outbreaks, hopefully giving us time for intervention to control the spread. We monitor the incidents and trends according to, therefore we can parasitize. Healthcare funding is not a bottomless pit, okay? It has got a finite allocation to it, so we must be able to actually rationalize and pick up what is the most aspects and why we do it in terms of what diseases takes the most impact to individuals, the community and the general public. Prioritization of resource allocation, assessment of effectiveness, then therefore of intervention. And these principles apply both to the community and hospital. So what disease to survey? Ah, this is quite an interesting area. So conditions which are communicable, conditions that are preventable and contentable, okay, that you can do something about. Obviously, conditions that has got high mortality, mortality, which means that conditions that cause a lot of illness and a high risk of death, or you require monitoring so that you can decide you've got a finite uh, sum of money you want to think which ones that you want to allocate, okay, money to, uh, to fund. So, sources of data. There are diseases that are notifiable that clinicians must actually notify. So usually based on clinical diagnosis or mandated within seven days except in very urgent conditions. There are also laboratories that are obligated by law to notify some of this infection if they have actually isolated in the lab. Syndromic notification, which I will talk a little bit about because this is quite important because this is how COVID-19 initially was actually suspected that was actually happening in Wuhan. And rumour tracking, yes, the international agency has got a team scouting through the internet, trotting through social media of people reporting what could be happening Okay, in, the, in, the, in that context. And we are quite fortunate that in fact, our laws of Malaysia in, in respect to healthcare is very broadly similar to United Kingdom. So what is compulsorily notifiable is very much similar to what is there in United Kingdom. For example, cholera, dengue fever, diphtheria, Ebola, measles, malaria, leprosy, just to name quite a few that are very similar between us here in Malaysia and United Kingdom. And yes, notification form as shown here, again, very much adapted, okay, in the context that it's easy, tick form, and the doctor that actually notify it must fill it in as diligently as possible. And yes, how about syndromic notification? Why is syndromic notification important? It, it facilitates rapid detection of outbreaks, it actually detects emerging diseases, it allows rapid response, it should trigger response to unexpected threats, and on the whole, there are six well-defined syndromes that we talk about. Acute Dermatological Syndrome, Acute Neurological Syndrome, Respiratory Syndrome, Hemorrhagic Syndrome, Jaundice Syndrome, Acute Diarrhea Syndrome. So it doesn't have to be a finite diagnosis of what the pathogen is, but it's a syndrome. And therefore it alerts, okay, the healthcare, public health individuals that something is not quite right. There may be an outbreak that's emerging in that context. And this is actually the form, again, from Ministry of Health Malaysia in actually defining this syndromic notification. And here again, the information flow, okay, then there is a pathway of how we actually define those um, notification in that context. 
So all public and private hospital laboratories are regulated. That is notifiable disease must be notified. And it, it actually shown here, okay, in the context of isolates of TB, malaria, dengue, HIV. HIV is not a notifiable disease in the United Kingdom, but it's a voluntary notification and everyone does it as well. Salmonella listeria, okay, in that context. So rumor surveillance, yes. Rumor surveillance, why is it important? Rumor surveillance is important is in terms that it could be early warning of an outbreak. Search news, okay, a team search news for the media, newspaper, someone reporting that something unusual happening. Why we are so keen about this? You may have heard and read about disease X. Malaysia is getting keyed up to plan for this. We really don't know what it is, what disease X is, is all about. But by rumor tracking, we may be able to actually see is there an issue here? Community leaders, okay, and we the team would either verify is this significant or refuting it, okay, in that context, and you disseminated information for action. So I think it's quite important to actually bear this in mind in terms of surveillance in that context.